welcome back to the Borderland Build Series, episode six. As promised, we're talking all things 12 volt in this episode for our D-Max Touring setup. Now this is a DIY setup. So we're gonna be chatting through the products that we've chosen to use, bit of an overview of how we put together the 12 volt board for the back of the canopy and the electrical equipment that we can run off this setup now that we're on the road. So yes, this episode is coming to you from the road. We have officially left for our big lap. We're in far North Queensland in the Daintree area. It's absolutely beautiful. The car is not looking as shiny new as it was in the last episode, but we're having heaps of fun, as you can see. We're really keen to wait to bring you this episode from the road, just to make sure that the system was working as perfectly as we would hope it would, which it absolutely is. We're really, really happy with it. So let's get straight into it. Righto, so the 12 volt rundown, no build series is complete without 12 volts. So we're gonna give you a walkthrough today on, like Em said, the products that we've chosen and how we put it all together. So it won't be a super technical video um, as we're not experts, but we are gonna give you the walkthrough of what we've done. So we've chosen to go DIY on this 12 volt setup. Now there's plenty of ways you can do it. You can take it into the shop and get it done turnkey. You can buy those pre-made cabinets uh, with all your 12 volt stuff pre-installed into them. But we decided we wanted to go down the DIY route and it was a great learning experience for us as well because we have a far better understanding of how, how our own system works. Now, when we say DIY, we definitely didn't do all of this ourselves. I'm not a 12 volt expert, M's not a 12 volt expert, unless there's something she's not telling me, which would have been really helpful about three or four months ago. So we have to say a big, big thank you to the team at Remco Energy for all of their help and advice. And also to our good mate, Woody from Australian Overlander. Go and check out the Australian Overlander page. Woody makes some amazing content there. Uh, Woody, M and I spent a solid week and a half at night uh, chipping away at this build uh, after Woody had finished work. So yeah, mate, a huge thank you. We couldn't have done this without you and we're very grateful. It's up and running really, really well. Like Em said, this thing's fresh off the telly track and it had the absolute bazonkers shook out of the whole thing and nothing fell off the board, mate. So we're pretty happy about that. <laughs> and the fridge is still running and all of our gear is still charging. So a bit of a summary of the process we followed for the setup. We basically laid everything out onto the marine ply boards that we have mounted to the headboard of the canopy here, just to make sure everything was, uh, was gonna fit, that it was all in the right spot, that we could access our charging ports and all that kind of thing, that we could plug in and unplug things as required. We then made sure our boards were cut to size. So we used 12 mil marine ply from Bunnings and some marine carpet as well. We just stuck that down with some Selly's glue spray. Um, after we had everything laid out where we wanted it and we made sure that the boards, we did a test fit with the boards, made sure that they all fit into the canopy properly. Once that was done, we secured everything to the board. So it's a combination of screws and we also use some uh, bolts with T-nuts as well. So the T-nuts, grip into the back of the marine ply. And when you're doing the kind of travel that we're doing, especially over a lot of corrugations, basically those T-nuts bite into the back of the board and the bolt holds it in, holds into the T-nut so it, it can't come loose. And after doing the um, the PDR and the Teletrack, literally nothing's come loose on this board. So those T-nuts are a really good option. We used M6s for the bigger stuff like the inverter and then M5s for some of the smaller bits and pieces. So once all that was done, we slotted the two boards into the canopy and mounted them to the headboard wall of the canopy. Now there was some, uh, there was a, a channel at the top of the canopy that we were able to screw into with some self-tapping metal screws. And then we've just used some little aluminium brackets across the bottom to secure it into the floor. So that's holding nice and sturdy. And like I said, nothing's moved even after all of those corrugations. And once that was in, it was running cable. So we've run cable out to all the lights, which Em will give you a rundown on later as well. Um, running photovalic cable up to the uh, solar panel. So we've got 415 watts total solar on top of the Bush Company tent roof. So we ran all that cable up and then obviously wired up the fridge um, when we did the lights as well. So we then put the battery in the Remco 150 amp hour lithium extra battery, left a space at the front there for that. That just sits along the bottom of the board behind this drawer here. So we then ran the cabling for the dual battery system. So um, 20 mil square cable running from the starter battery in the car through the canopy up to the deep cycle battery so that we effectively have a working dual battery system and that our alternators charge the Remco 150 lithium as we drive.
Now to give you a bit of a rundown of everything that we've put on the board in a little bit more detail. So we've put in a 2000 watt inverter. So that's rated to a 4000 watt surge. Uh, we wanted to, we needed an inverter to run all of our content creation devices, but we also have another sneaky little thing appliance wise around the other side that Em's gonna talk to you about. So we needed a decent size inverter for that. Um, we've got a Victron Smart Solar MPPT solar charge controller. So that's obviously connected up to the um, two by 215 watt solar panels that are on the roof of the Bush Company tent, uh, 430 watts of solar altogether up on the roof, which is serving us really, really well so far. I think the most I've seen go through it in good sun was 22 amps or somewhere thereabouts. The panels were a little bit dirty, so I don't know exactly what it's gonna get on average uh, over a longer period of time, but that seems to put a fair bit of charge back into the um, into the Remco 150 lithium. Little power distribution box. So with all of the uh, gear that we have and that we need to charge, we needed plenty of USB ports. This one we just got online. Um, I think it was like 150 bucks and it's got a couple of type C USB plugs. It's got two quick charge USBs, two standard USBs, a couple of DC 12 volt ins. Um, and then it had two SIG plugs up the top, but we changed one of those over to another twin USB as well, uh, just in case we needed more USBs, because who doesn't need eight USB plugs in their car? Now this silver guy below the inverter, that's a 40 amp AC charger. So that thing can plug into the mains 240 volt power and charge the lithium battery up, which is kind of handy if you if you don't have solar for a few days or you haven't been driving and you're at a powered site or you're just at home and you want to keep your battery topped up, um, then that's really, really useful for that. All of this is running through a Victron smart shunt that we've got on the side here. Um, negative bus bar, fuse box, and then the big Remco 150 amp hour lithium extra battery, which I'll give you more of a rundown on now. So the battery, the engine room of this whole operation. So we've chosen to go with a Remco lithium deep cycle extra battery. So this guy's a 150 amp hour, which so far has been serving us really well in terms of capacity. Um, now it's really hard to show you shots of the battery because it is actually so slimline and the way that we've mounted it behind this uh, this board here, it sits nice and snugly up against the bottom of the 12 volt board. So it weighs in at about 17 kilos. So it's pretty light. When we're talking 150 amp hour batteries, the equivalent for an AGM battery, you'd be looking at like 40 to 50 kilos. So massive weight saving. It's in a nice, strong, lightweight aluminum case and it came with mounting brackets as well. So I think it had four or six mounting brackets. We didn't end up using all of them, um, but it had mounting aluminum mounting brackets and screws as well uh, with little mounting holes on the battery case. So it was super easy to screw those brackets in and mount it up to the board. You can also run these guys in parallel. We've left a space for another one to fit next to it. So if we ever did decide that we needed to bump up our um, our amp hour capacity to 300, then we could easily go and put another 150 amp hour Remco lithium in um, in front of it, and that would fit in there nicely. It's um pretty much dead space, so we could easily fit another one in there, and it's not gonna, even going to take up that much room. So these guys have M8 bolt terminals on them as well. And then you've got Anderson plugs built into the case too, which is super handy. So a couple of really cool features about this Remco battery. Firstly, it has an inbuilt 40 amp DC DC charger. So we didn't have to have a separate DC DC mounted up to the wall. So space saving, it's all built into one. And it also has an inbuilt battery management system as well. So that was really cool. Being able to just plug and play, we literally put the battery in as one of the last things that we did mounted it to the wall and just plugged everything into it. So we had the board, like I said, pre-built, mounted that in, the battery went in at the end and we just plugged it in and it was ready to go. Another huge benefit to the Remco battery here is that it's ignition sensing. So in modern cars, smart alternators reduce the voltage as the main battery gets full. And when the voltage reduces, voltage sensitive charges will turn off because they think the car's turned off basically. So that's why an ignition sensing charger is a massive benefit to keep charging even when that voltage drops down. So size wise, the battery is about 560 mil long. So just over half a meter, um, 20, 
two, 250 mil or so high and it's about 85 deep. So it's not, it's not a huge unit in the scheme of 150 amp hour batteries and it fits in there really nicely. Obviously, we're living out of this D-Max for up to a year. We really needed to design the system to make sure that it could charge everything that we needed to charge, run every piece of equipment that we needed it to run um, that we basically would at home, but from a car. It is charging stacks of stuff, more than I thought we would actually use on the road, but it's handling it really well. We are charging a pretty insane amount of camera equipment. So we've got GoPros, the drone, we charge the gimbal, we're running two computers for editing. Uh, we've got phones, cameras that we charge as well. We're also running power up to the Bush Company rooftop tent. So we charge our phones overnight. We've got Sirocco fans that we run when it's warm. We also charge our iPad when we're using it up there as well. It's also powering six work lights that we've mounted around the car and four underbody lights. Not to mention the power we've got going across on the kitchen side, which I'll go show you now. So over this side of the canopy, there's basically two major appliances that the 12 volt system is helping to support. The first is our 130 litre Bushman fridge. So it's quite a big fridge, it's got a big capacity. It's got an inbuilt freezer and it's really been running for the last month in, in quite warm temperatures, even up to about 35 degrees. It's got a variable speed compressor and draws about two to four and a half amps. Now the second, it might be a little bit bougie, but when you live on the road full time, sometimes you want to take those creature comforts with you. So we have decided to install a microwave into our canopy. It's a 700 watt microwave, um, and that runs off the 2000 watt inverter that we've installed on the 12 volt system. We have been using this microwave pretty much every day because it's so quick and easy, sometimes multiple times a day, and the battery is handling it surprisingly really, really well. Um, even using it multiple times a day, it hasn't drained that battery to a level that's unacceptable or anywhere close to it, really. So we've been super happy with how it's going. So that's our 12 volt setup in a nutshell. Like I said, we've been on the road for a month now. Everything seems to be working better than we ever expected. There's nothing that we really wanna change at this stage. We have left a little bit of capacity on the board to add things if we need, and obviously a second battery if we ever choose to. Uh, but at this stage, we're really, really happy with how it's going. If you have any specific questions about the setup, make sure you leave them in the comments below. We'll definitely do our best to answer them for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like the video and make sure to check out the rest of the Borderland build series if you haven't yet. We'll see you in the next episode.